Ukraine faces a difficult frontline situation while its own campaign against the Russian refineries is continuing to bear fruits. At least though there is light on the horizon for Ukraine as fresh aid is being announced. This and more in this situation report about the war in Ukraine. Reuters reports that Russia has now asked Kazakhstan because of the attacks on its refineries to create an emergency reserve of 100,000 tons of gasoline in times of need. So if Russia needs it, that Russia can, that Kazakhstan can supply Russia with it. Kazakhstan though denied it that this is true, which would kind of make sense as the Kazakhstan government tries to distance itself from Russia's war in Ukraine and from overt support to it. And and at the same time, they do, uh, they are one of the most important countries for smuggled wares. So it's possible that Kazakhstan denies it while they actually did it. But obviously, as of now, we do not have the actual facts. Ukraine struck a training ground, a training installation for for Russian uh, pilots in the oblast of Voronezh while while surveillance cameras were showing explosions at the same time there is no report of any serious danger uh, damage done by this attack the russians claim that civilian targets were hit ukraine's energy minister herman halushchenko admits that russia has done heavy damage on ukraine's power plants and on its electric distribution systems 80 percent of the electricity generation capacity over thermal power plants is now involved or is has been hit or has been attacked not uh, in any case the not in every case the damage is equal but in total 80 percent was attacked by the russians lithuania on the other hand according to reports is offering to start dismantling its obsolete its shut down thermal power plants to gain spare parts to deliver them for for ukraine so ukraine has an easier time repairing its own thermal power plants at the same time glide bombing attacks by the russians continue the ukrainians uh, a russian mill blogger was talking about a hundred glide bombs being used against the city of kharkiv on the 5th of april alone obviously attacks continue over that itself um, over apart from that day as well kharkiv is now increasingly being hit with glide bombs and on along the front line the attacks with glide bombs also continue there is a video of a russian attack on a storage site of um, d20 howitzers in in uh, this case the russians likely used an iskander m ballistic missile destroying it the good news is though that while those are 32 howitzers the according to reports they are in that position since 2017 out in the open so supposedly they must be useless they must have been useless at least otherwise we would have expected ukraine by now to have started refurbishing them or at least to disassemble them for spare parts so i guess the loss wasn't that great for ukraine um it's unclear though uh, as I said, a lot of it is speculation at this point. We can't really say it, but the installation itself seems to have been reached by Russian ground troops in their initial invasion, and they neither felt the need to destroy it nor take them to destroy those artillery pieces, nor take them back to Russia, which would be another indication of them more or less being useless. On the northern front line, uh, we have fresh reports from Sumy, where the Ukrainian border troops are reporting that the Russians continue trying to cross over the border with reconnaissance and sabotage groups. Um, usually they are being repulsed, at least according to the Ukrainian uh, border troops. So on the eastern front, north of the Sivetsky Donetsk, I have no fresh changes in territory the russian attacks towards terni continue that much is being reported but there doesn't seem to have been any change in territory north of the river over the last few days south of it we do have some change at um, Bilohorivka. we have visual evidence that the russians managed to uh, reach the high ground here this is a chalk quarry where the where there was a high ground with a trench in it which was so far held by the ukrainians the russians seem to have been able to storm it so this position has now fallen to the russians and um, this is the first significant change or the first change at all over the last few weeks that we have here from bodanivka uh, excuse me from bilohorivka 
further south, we have some some change in the um, in in Bodanivka. Now here in Bodanivka, the Russians have managed to enter the southern part of town. I have a geolocalization as well. You see, this is uh, Bodanivka, a long a town mostly just following a single road. Here in the south, we have Chasiv Yar and here, and this is Ivanivske. So it's on the flank, and the Russians managed to take this. Uh, this uh, wooded area and enter the town here. As of now, I have not found a Ukrainian confirmation that this area is already being evacuated. It seems likely, though, that this is probably in progress, that there won't be many Ukrainians left. The Ukrainians will likely set up a new defensive line on the high ground here, going north towards this. But Budanivka seems more or less to be fallen by now or in the process of falling itself. Um, the Russians also managed to advance between um, between Chasiv Yar and Ivanivske. Here, the Russians managed to uh, to advance along that forested area on the high ground, which will obviously give them control towards the road into Ivanivske, which then also should mean that the rest of Ivanivske should be allowed uh, should be about to fall. And now the Russians are increasingly securing the two flanks of their advance into Chasif Yar, so sh we should expect an increased intensity over the over the next coming days. The glide bombing attacks onto Chasif Yar also continuing. But we see this how the situation is along the front line now. When we look at this here, those are two Sukhoi 25 from the Russian Air Force that are flying low level um, ground support, close air support directly along the front line here, as the Ukrainian side obviously does not have the local air defense to deter them, to shoot them down, and the Ukrainian Air Force does not operate in this area. So the Russians are right now capable of providing direct um, close air support here in this area where um, the fighting is now the thickest. We um, continue further south at Klishivka and Rivka. I have no current change in territory. We'll have to see how the situation will continue here once Ivanivska is under full control by the Russians. So we go to the area of Avdivka. We have in the in the north, we have some advances in the area of Novo Kalidone. Novo, Novo Kalinove. Here the Russians managed to advance along that tree line here, but we also have additional geolocalizations where they have been even in the northeast. Now this was the tree line here, and we see them in the northeast basically up to this part, which seems likely that the area here will probably be in Russian hands as of now or in the process of falling. So we see some advances towards Keramik over the last few days. Further south, the Russians have also been spotted again here in this um, contested area. No major change in territory that can be confirmed here, though. But we do have advances by the Russians towards Umanske. Here, the Russians take over additional areas inside of the tree line, inside of those windbreaker tree lines where they manage to advance further west. Further south, Pervomaiske has now fallen after, I think, like 14 months off of battle for the town, probably even longer. We have visual evidence of the Russians raising their flag in the western part of the town. And fresh in are reports that the Ukrainians did a shortening of the front line north of Pervomaiske, that probably this whole area east of this was given up by the Ukrainians as they are here out in the open, just uh, only having the cover of a few tree lines that they have pulled back probably to a line roughly here. Um, I have the, the reports from pro-Ukrainian sites. Apart from that, I cannot confirm it yet, but it seems to be the reasonable thing to do. So we should expect that this, is, this actually happened there. Further south, the Russians are also advancing. They have entered Krasnohorivka again. They have been in the southeastern part recently, but have been kicked out by the Ukrainians. This time they managed to enter the southeastern part here are Dutchers again, and they managed to, to gain a foothold here. Now, the Ukrainians did counterattacks that went into this area, and we've seen Ukrainians entering houses here on a video that's here. And unfortunately, YouTube doesn't like it too much if I show videos like this. So um, 
I, in this case, I will not show you the video of the trucks driving around and the artillery fire, but we see that the Ukrainian soldiers have re-entered that area. There are claims that the Ukrainians managed to push the Russians back out, that supposedly this area is fully back under Ukrainian control, but uh, we, I even found Ukrainian mill bloggers saying, no, no, the Russians are still there. So it seems more likely that this area, there might have been counterattacks, but either they failed. We had that before that we see videos that supposedly show a successful attack and they are simply being cut off the moment the attacks fail we've seen that from both sides in the past so this might have been a failed attack or the russians still managed to push them back the most likely point is that the russians are now in krasnohorivka here they they managed to gain a foothold into it further south the um the russians are also advancing inside of novomikhailivka here we have a fresh success being reported as well and we can see it's now west of the beginning of this lake here lately last last situation report i think it was we had them in here now the the russians have roughly re reached this point here so the actual front line is now more like this and then going over here at least according to what we've seen in the past um, by the geolocalizations that we had also, south of Novomikhailivka, they managed to advance further in this area to gain a permanent foothold along the tree line here, increasing the pressure from the south, though, so the situation inside of Novomikhailivka is uh, getting worse by the day at this very moment. Further south and west, I do not have much to report. Uh, fighting obviously continues in Velika Novosilka, south of it as well, but no change in territory on Orichiv. At Orichiv, we do have a change though, and here we have a Ukrainian mill blogger confirming that the Russians have reached up to this point, at least temporarily. So we see them having entered um, Robotine up to, this should be, let me check again. This is the second road and a few houses up from the crossroad so they have reached up till here so the whole this whole area is at the very least contested as of now if the russians haven't managed to gain a permanent foothold yet so robotine is under pressure as well and in this context it shouldn't surprise us a lot what uh, the ukrainian president Zelensky said in an interview where he admitted that ukraine currently is not capable of going into the offensive they are trying to make up for the material weaknesses and the lack of artillery mostly with drones and they managed to um, make up for it to a certain degree but obviously not enough there were there were also recent analysis that according to them over 70 percent of the recently destroyed ifvs and tanks were all destroyed by ukrainian drones so we see how much it has shifted from artillery being the main killer to now being drones simply not not because drones would be so much better but simply because the ukrainians do not have the artillery shells to use their tubes to the degree that they could be used at the same time, Zelensky said, though, Russia won't be defeated with a strategic defensive. So obviously, Ukraine will have to go into the offensive again. That's obvious and that we should expect Ukraine to try to go into the offensive. But here it will be up to the Western partners to a big degree how much they can supply Ukraine with weapons. And in this regard, um, F-16s came up and F-16s, he says, the F-16s that are coming to Ukraine will make roughly 10% of the new need for the Ukrainian Air Force to defeat the Russian Air Force. So he says we'll get 10% of what we would need to defeat the Russians, basically confirming what we talked about here in the past, that the Ukrainian F-16s won't be a game changer. They will help the Ukrainians do everything a little better that they have done so far, but that's it. They won't change the overall setting. They won't change the overall situation at all. They will just allow the Ukrainians to do everything a little better, including with with a better usage of the harm, better usage of JDAM, better usage of air-to-air -air missiles with the introduction of um, active radar guided, um, uh, uh, active radar guided MRAM missiles. Budanov, the Ukrainian head of the GUR, the military intelligence, said that he expects an intensifying of the Russian offensive activities late spring and early summer, mostly in Donbass. So according to him, we will have to see an additional uh, offensive activity, probably from uh, Avdivka west to along the road here to that crossroad to that um, 
uh, transport hub and uh, from Chasiv Yar likely going towards Konstantinivka and Kramatorsk. This, these will likely be the next goals for the Russians once they manage to take those or if they take those. And there are fresh reports in, unconfirmed as of now. I cannot emphasize this enough. I was not able to confirm it, but supposedly in pro-Russian telegram channels, they are currently saying that their Starlink terminals have gone offline. Now, um, we talked about it in the past that the the Russians increasingly started using Starlink that was bought in other countries, either in the US and then smuggled, smuggled out, or in the United Arab Emirates or in other countries then being brought. So the Russians started using Starlink as well. Now, according to those reports, um, the Starlink seems to have made like a reset. So everyone who has a Starlink system needs to reconnect and ask demand support. And that support is obviously not given to anyone on the Russian side. So this should take them out at least for a while. If those claims are true, as said, they aren't really confirmed as of now. In partisan activity, we have partisan sabotage, etc. spy activity. We have a claim by the GUR that they managed to damage a Buyan M class uh, ship, a corvette, the Serputchov in Kaliningrad. Now, this uh, they show a video which doesn't show much. You see starting of a fire in something that seems to be a ship. Uh, according to them, it was them. It was the GUR who started that, that fire and uh, they managed to to create heavy fire damage on that Corvette. The Corvette itself is fairly modern and it is capable of firing either eight caliber missiles or eight P-800 Onyx. So uh, it carries quite the punch for being a fairly small ship. And the Russians have reported they ha that they have arrested a spy. And as it is likely a spy that um, was passing information about troop transports and so on. And as it is done in a case like this, he obviously had a US flag with him and wrote down with handwriting the US national anthem on a piece of paper. As we know, this is what spies usually do. Like we had it in the past two years ago, where three versions of the video game, The Sims, were caught with Ukrainian spies that came to Ukraine, obviously, with Hitler's Mein Kampf, a swastika flag, etc. Um, it's, 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 yeah. Um, I guess you heard my sarcasm, the Russian... Uh, propaganda efforts are getting are, are remaining ridiculous in what they claim how they catched caught spies um, this is just ludicrous uh, once more then we have um, the in troop generation we have fresh information according to the US China has now given Russia microelectronics optics machine tools for tanks propellants for missiles so China is creeping closer to uh, the red lines of the West when it comes to aid for Russia. They are also handing over nitrocellulose and jet engines. So nitrocellulose is a basis for explosives that where China produces 50% of the worldwide supply. And they are helping Russia out with this as well. And the US suspect that China also gives the Russians satellite pictures that um, it shows the increased support by the Chinese for the Russian for the Russian um, aggression. Then there is a video, there's appeared a video of a Russian, it's being called a tortoise tank. So this is a T-72 that we can see here that has uh, sheet metal around it to for protection against drones. And the Russians uh, then took a video walking around it, showing it because they were so proud using it. And the latest reports are that the Ukrainians were able to identify the place after that video was taken and destroyed it. And on the pictures indeed seems to be the destroyed tortoise tank. Now, while it seems to be successful against drones, I've read Ukrainian military bloggers confirming that. At the same time, it obviously prevents the Russian tank from using its, its main weapon in an appropriate way as it can only shoot forward maybe 10 15 degrees to each side and once it retreats it can't even shoot back at all anymore because that cover is uh, is blocking the movement of the turret we'll have to see how successful this will be uh, there are some speculations that the russians might use it to have troops under that metal 
to to uh, give them protection at least from small arms fire and splinters as the russians have moved uh, are increasingly using armored fighting vehicles be it ifvs and be it tanks as kind of battle taxis driving in dropping off troops and then retreating this this might add additional protection but at least it's um the the construction is far from ideal even if for the moment it seems to have worked at, at least in this very moment but again as said that tank is already being destroyed it was already destroyed according to reports in troop generation terms from ukrainian side we have a video published by the ukrainians which seems to prove the first usage of the ukro lancet that's the nickname that was given to the ukrainian copy of the russian loitering munition the suicide drone lancet the ukrainians obviously saw that it was dangerous and effective so they simply copied it and it seems to be in operational use now by the ukrainians and the ukrainians uh, are currently debating in parliament whether uh, sentenced criminals will be allowed to serve in the military in a first reading the parliament uh, agreed to a um, supposed law that would allow uh, probation for for prisoners if they uh, are willing to join the army not n this will not be extended to criminals that have been in prison for sexual crimes for murder as well as for crimes against humanity or against national security other than that they those uh, criminals will be open for probation if they join the ukrainian armed forces in the political sphere, we also have new Sirsky, the new Supreme Commander, the new Commander-in-Chief by the of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. He is currently openly addressing and um, moving against parts of the SBU, the intelligence agency, that, uh, according to the reports, several uh, in people inside the SBU have... Uh, called up, called the recruitment offices to issue recruitment papers to a journalist who was investigating. Uh, he, he got draft summons after he was investigating corruption inside the SBU, basically to punish him for daring to go after corrupt uh, intelligence officers. He was supposed to be sent to the front line. This became public, so Sirsky is now intervening and... Um, well, I have not found, though, whether that um, journalist was taken out of the army again or whether that draft summons have been rescinded. Uh, general, the Russian general and Duma, member of Duma, Andriy Gurulov, says in a leaked audio that Kazakhstan will be the next target and that there are already plans and decisions being made to uh, take over Kazakhstan after they are done with Ukraine. Now it's obviously being said that this is a fake. It might be a fake. I mean, AI fakes are really good at these times and he is a hardliner, so that would be possible. But I said this went public. Uh, over the last few days and in international support we have some some news uh, ukraine in total the us said ukraine can get 65 f-16 they gave permission um, six block 10 and 13 block 15 would come from denmark norway would give them 22 block 10 and block 15 and the netherlands 24 block 10 and block 15 at the same time uh, the it's now being discussed that Greece wants to decommission 32 F5, F16 as they are getting F60, F35 and they are getting Rafale, but they want to sell them. And while the price is one thing, the um, fact remains, while this might open a new avenue for new F16s, they are supposedly staying in service for another couple of years. So this would be eight that comes in five years or later. And obviously we would all hope that the war is over by then and hopefully over with a good ending for Ukraine. Uh, US also gave Ukraine weapons, uh, 5,000 assault rifles, machine guns and sniper rifles, uh, RPG-7s, those are the shoulder-fired anti-tank weapons, as well as 500,000 rounds of 762 by 39 I guess, were given to them. Um, they were confiscated from Iranian smugglers of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps that were intending to give them to the Houthis. That is a source of soviet style weaponry that was given to ukraine several times before already they received those shipments in the past as well from the same source estonia also says confirmed again that they found two to three billion euros of artillery shells that could be and that's the important thing that could be given to ukraine within two months 
if payment comes up. And that's currently the issue because while there were some conflicting reports, it seems to be the case that even those seven to 800,000 check shells aren't even paid in full yet. So yeah, there will be additional money needed. And as the US is currently not willing to aid, um, this will be up for Europe to gulp up the money. And at least the Eurozone, uh, the European Union is uh, one of the strongest economic zones in the world. So theoretically, at least they should be able to do so. Germany announced 20 additional martyrs. Now, I'm not completely sure um, if those are actually 20 new ones that were not announced before or if it's 20 new that were given to Ukraine. But at least the information is that uh, Ukraine gets 20 martyrs for now. Um, the German armed forces are currently slowly decommissioning their martyrs and there seem to still be some in depots and in refurbishment. So there will be a trickle of additional martyr IFVs going to Ukraine for the in the coming months and probably even years. And we have news from the US that the US are selling uh, weaponry uh, defense articles for 138 million, uh, mostly to support the Hawk air defense system that is obsolete, but still doing its job against cruise missiles and drones in Ukraine. And it's urgently needed to keep them running. That is according to those uh, reports. And Germany announced a new delivery as well, 6,155 millimeter shells, 1 million rounds of infantry weapons. So I guess rifle and pistol ammunition, 680 assault rifles, 50 precision rifles, reconnaissance drones, uh, mine clearing tanks, and, um, and thermal imaging devices were also promised to Ukraine. But that was already it from now, for me for now. So while the front line isn't that uh, developing that great there is at least hope for ukraine if the west gets its act together especially if europe gets its act together as from the us there doesn't seem to be much willingness to help ukraine in these times and obviously as a european war it should be much more in europe's interest anyways to decide it in behalf of ukraine than it obviously is for the for the united states but that was it for me for now if you enjoyed this report please give it a thumbs up it really helps with the algorithm leave a comment what do you think about the current situation and the international aid and if you're new here i would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future videos this channel is only possible because of the support of viewers like you if you like to support the channel you can do so by the means in the description thank you very much to everyone already supporting this channel and that's it for me for now thank you for watching and i'll be back